You know, I hear stories uh, every day, and you do too, most likely. And But there are some stories that I hear that I just know that I have to listen in really hard. Um, and because it's kind of like walking on sacred ground with somebody, that, that they're sharing something that I really need to focus on it and listen intently to what they're saying. And it's often when someone takes the risk of saying a few words, you know, they're hesitant, they're, they're like, hmm, can I share this with somebody? Will they, will they reject me? Um, and sometimes it's like they've, they've nailed the door of that area of their lives so tightly that they don't want anybody to know. They've even like super glued all around the edges that they don't want anyone to know. But uh, stories have to be told. And untold, they can like eat away like a parasite uh, within you. And of course, I think a lot of uh, depression, anxiety, stress. And I think all of us need someone where we can share our stories, where we feel that we're heard, we're known, and we're loved and embraced. You see, we were designed for oneness. And that beauty of being known and knowing someone else. It's its like a scent still lingering in us from the um, Garden of Eden days. We want it. We long for it. Um, it's in our DNA. Yeah, I receive stories. That, you know, it's my passion. <laughs> People email me. Um, sometimes we have a talk online uh, via Zoom or some other app. Um and we talk about stories. And sometimes we might even meet for coffee. But that's quite rare. Because most of the people that I know through turning the page are, are online. And that's great. But many other stories are, are ones where they've reached out into like a church community setting. And they've been hurt. I get emails like that every week. And so people... Uh, they withdraw even further and they create a life of being perfectly acceptable to the populace <laughs> but thoroughly un unknown and unheard to just a few. Stories have a habit of creating their own story. We get a, a few snippets of experiences, glue them together with some emotional reasoning and out pops an interpretation. <laughs> and then as a result, um, stories can often take on a wild and warped life of their own. And look, I've often wondered why I felt called to call this blog um, Turning the Page. It, I remember it was one of those aha moments. The name felt good. I didn't know why, but it felt good. And I'd be listening to Bob Seger's uh, song Turn the Page, and the title grabbed me. You know, and some books are real page turners aren't they you just can't stop reading them until you you've done you get so absorbed with them you rush through them wanting to see what happens next but other books um they need really careful consideration and if you if you're going to get the real value and there is a turning of the page to the next part of the story but often you have you you have to go back a few pages or to the start to get in, um, to understand what's going on now, and um, to get the details right, and then when you do, uh, everything starts to fall in place. And some books, um, you read them over and over and over again, like every year you read this particular book because you know that there's something new to be found still in that story. Uh, look, our stories are complex. I've never been a person with an uncomplex story. Um, <clears throat> and probably the most uh, complex and mysterious story in the Bible is that of a man named Job. It's a story, I think, about us. It's about our um, relationships with our family, our friends, and God. And it's actually a deep dive into trauma and suffering. <laughs> So I'm like, oh no, Job, oh, hard work. But it's also, it's a prayer journal, uh, a book of wisdom, and a really a guide for anyone wanting to help. Uh, 
And to receive the story of Job, it's like receiving a mystery. <laughs> One of those mysteries, um, stories you watch on telly, you don't know, or TV. You, d you don't know who's, what the result's going to be at the end. Um, you see, for these people that email me, they've come to somebody with a story. And, and um, when people come to me with stories, um, you watch and you listen and you notice their responses and nonverbal responses. And when, um, when I come to people with a story, I watch for those things. And I ask, are they open and embracing or are they closed and distant? Do they slowly ask good questions or quickly give answers? Have you, they held you um, in the mystery you face or are they afraid of their own? You see, we long to be embraced. And here's a quote from um, Miroslav Volf. It's one of my favourite quotes. I've got lots of them. <laughs> An embrace always involves a double movement of opening and closing. I open my arms to create a space in myself for the other. The open, si open arms are a sign of discontent at being myself only and of desire to include the other. They are an invitation to the others to come and feel at home with me and to belong to me. In an embrace, I also close my arms around the others, not tightly so as to crush and assimilate them forcefully into myself, for that would not be an embrace, but a concealed power act of exclusion, but gently so as to tell them that I do not want them to be without I do, that I do not want to be without them in their otherness. I want them in their openness. I want them to remain independent and true to their genuine selves, to maintain their identity, and, to such, and as such to become part of me, so that they can enrich me with what they have and what I do not. Look, there, there is an expectation, I believe, that Christian churches and um, Christians and especially pastors should be able to handle your story, every story. You know, we still have the scent of Eden wafting in our souls where um, embracing was natural and normal. You know, and so we look to those supposedly meant to represent God and uh, disappointed when they don't come through. <laughs> it's interesting that on the book of Job, everyone lets him down. Even God didn't give him answers. God gave him questions, big, bold, challenging and alluring questions that steered Job to find his own answers. Answers that no human could have provided. Not everyone can handle your story, so let's adjust the expectation level. Many, maybe only those who have been there, done that, got the t-shirt, can truly embrace with the type of authenticity that you need. Look, um... We all like our mysteries solved, don't we? Preferably there is a, and they lived happily ever after, after the struggle. But I've found that what I want more is presence and absence. In the dark moments, I want to know the awareness of someone, human, who doesn't necessarily have all the answers, uh, but is willing to sit with me uh, on the ash heap. And uh, Job, it says, Job sat on the pile of ashes where he was mourning. Ah, oh, in those moments when life isn't going so well, I just want someone to sit with me on my sheep. Uh, the, the best answers come from prayer and questions that might be full of rage one moment to whimpers of pain the next. Perhaps someone simply walking with us takes care of much of the problem. Here's another quote. When we are understood, when we feel another person really cares, it's surprising how the problem, for the most part, can fade. We don't need the answer anymore. The mere fact that someone is carrying the burden with us, walking with us on the journey, for some unbelievable reason, it's not logical at all, takes care of much of the problem. Richard Rohr. Look, there's, there's no neat end to this post. <laughs> No pretty bow on top, no list of things to do or steps to take. Other than this, 
Be the kind of person that asks more questions than gives answers. Here's some quotes. No one but God can capture the full projection of one's soul. When we're young, we try to fall in love with the perfect person <laughs> who will totally understand us. And the great disappointment is to discover that no person can. And that's what Job is asking, almost demanding. Someone, try to understand me. When we are understood, we feel another person really cares. It's surprising how the problem, for the most part, can fade. We don't need the answer anymore. The mere fact that someone is carrying the burden with us, walking with us on the journey for some unbelievable reason, it's not logical at all, takes care of much of the problem. And that's the primary character of a true counsellor, one who can receive another's story. This is what Job asks for in his friends, and what humanity asks for us, in us. To skip the urge to give people answers to fix their problems. It seems all we can genuinely do is to be there with life. It's the only way we can overcome death. It's true friendship. Sensitive listeners respond to comments, and that's from Richard Raw, by the way, that one. Sensitive listeners respond to comments with words that convey an interest in hearing more. Sentences that open the door to information. Words that open doors transmit two messages. I am interested in whatever you have to say. Two, I will accept you regardless of what you have to say. That was from Larry Crabb. Learn to respond to others with open, honest questions instead of counsel or corrections. For such questions, we help each other into deeper speech. Parker Palmer. When you speak to me about your deepest questions, you do not want me to you do not want to be fixed or saved. You want to be seen and heard, to have your truth acknowledged and honoured. Parker Palmer. Good work is relational, and its outcomes depend on what we are able to evoke from each other. Parker Palmer. It is usually most helpful to ask questions that are more about the person than about the problem. Parker Palmer. Only those willing to stand close enough to listen will ever hear those closest to the problem. Jim Wallace Loneliness isn't the physical absence of other people. It's a sense that you're not sharing anything that matters with anyone else. Johan Hari Here's some questions. How do you receive other stories? How do you receive other stories? How, how do you do that? How do you do it? Number two, what are the qualities of someone who receives the story well? Number three, what does loneliness mean for you? That's this week's post. I hope you found it helpful um, <clears throat> in receiving story and sharing your story and receiving other story. Hey, um, if you want to read this post, it's over on turningthepage.co.nz. And I'd love you to read it there. You can email me at barry at turningthepage.co.nz. And just a big thank you to those people who financially support what I'm doing here. Uh, you can do it either via Patreon for a US dollar a month. <laughs> it's pretty cheap, isn't it? Or I've got this option where you can just donate um, any amount. And um, you can come over and find those options at turningthepage.co.nz forward slash support. So until next week. Um, learn to listen for the story, yours and others. Okay, bye.